So let's talk mechanics of this. So now that you have a clear image of your character, it's time to use the keywords you thought of to see how they play mechanically. And so this is action. the one. Crunch. Action die. Bum, bum, bum. To act in the world, one must apply these faculties. This is the core mechanic of the game that represents faculties with dice. And they function thus. In a round, you can use as many die as you wish. The same die cannot be used twice. All dice downgrade with use. This means a D8 becomes a D6, and then a D6 or D4, a D4 is gone. <sighs> Within dice pools, there are edge points. Edge stops a die from downgrading. Edge must be applied for a die within the same pool. Edge can only be used once per round. You can combine any dice you have for an action as long as it's appropriate for said action. For example, fire a bow with your body die and aim with your mental die. Adversely, you cannot move with your mind pool or remember with your body pool. Let me take a drink here. So do you get it? Faculties and how that do you have any questions? Um I'm I'm lost, so I have no questions. I will make it up as I go along. Okay, okay. Just you're gonna get it, trust me. I'm gonna get I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna get it. To make your action dipole, start with an average human and upgrade or downgrade, depending on how your character is endowed. An average human body's body dice ball is composed of three D6 and two H. Okay, <coughs> I can use any die I want, but not for body dice, then, or even mind uh, dice. Because he says you can use any dice you want at the start. I mean, for an action, you can use dice, so... But you can use your body dice for anything you could physically do. Okay. Okay, all right, I'll make that out. So... To make your action dice pull start with the average human and upgrade or downgrade, depending on the character. An average human's body dice pull is comprised of 3d6 and 2 edge, and with this, he uses his body to lift, strike, use a device, run. These dice are his vitality. When they are lost due to injury, he is knocked out or becomes unconscious, I guess. Yeah, yo! An average human's mind dice pull is 2d4 and 1 edge. With this, he uses his mind in order to make inferences, deduce, react. These dice represent his mental stability. When they are lost due to trauma, he is knocked out, becomes unconscious. Mental dice cannot be used to take physical actions. Game settings, some people have extraordinary faculties and that gives them special capabilities. Uh, special capacities for action, e.g. like magic, uh, mechanical body, psychic powers, and these are power dice pools. Depending on the setting, you may add dice for that, and when these dice are gone, there are consequences. Either being knocked out, or you become unconscious, or something very negative happens, or loss of control. It depends on the nature of the said power. Now, dice pools can be upgraded, and when making a character, you have five upgrade points to use. Gain a new D4, 1P. One point. One point. Okay. Yeah. Gain a new D4, one point. Make a D4 into a D6, two points. Make a D6 to a D8, three points. Make a D8 to a D10, four points. D10 to a D12, five points. Get an edge point in a pool, one point. One edge to two edges, two points. A two edge to three edges is three points. And three edges to four edges is four points. And four edges to five edges is five points. If you remove a die, Get the points it would cost you to make it. You get a smaller version of it. So, sorry, if you remove a die, get the points it would cost to make it. So if it. you have a D6 and you said, I want a D4 instead, mm -hmm. then you're going to get two points. Okay, you get two points back. Okay, yeah. so if you downgrade, you get the point. But if you, yeah, if you get a smaller version of it, if you have a D6 and you get a D4, you get two upgrade points. You can create dice and edges in a new power pool. You can only have five dice, however, in a pool. So, tip, have a designated colour for each pool, each dice pool. <laughs> so, do you get how this works? Do you get how the... This is the core mechanic of the game, because in most... You oh, notice... So... Yeah. So, my first thought here, being a 
developer is that I could probably write an algorithm to find out the most effective use of dice and upgrades. So if you give me half an hour to get the maximum number of points available for me, that or the biggest, best dice rolls and the best upgrades. Yeah, but the thing is you can do that and you can get consistently high dice rolls but that might not be too good because sometimes you might need the peak performance even though you don't have a lot of endurance but it means for one round you can really go to town with your rolls so it's the it's, you know it's the question who is a better athlete a marathon runner who can consistently over a long period of time travel a longer distance or a sprinter who can just cover cover us you know a relatively small amount of distance but he can do it it's like easy that. it's the sprinter because the marathon I mean, runner would have been eaten by the lion chasing the sprinter in the marathon runner. i mean it's not just <laughs> you got i mean it's not just chasing the, <laughs> being chased by the lion you might want to chase an antelope so what would you rather catch the antelope or get away from the lion i wouldn't want to chase an antelope i'd rather get away from a lion because i mean you can you can get away from the lion but if you don't chase the antelope you're gonna starve to that so you tell me yes but if you don't get away from the line you've got no hope of chasing the antelope you gotta do you? both <laughs> you gotta do both so i mean you can't do this and that's the thing you know you can create a bow and arrow and and, and like and shoot the antelope it's fine it's, it's just like an example i'm just saying well i know it's an example also on the other hand uh, so, remember so the dice are also your hp <laughs> so if you get hit and if you get hit you're gonna see this later but if you get mm. hit and you can't defend yourself, you're going to lose a dice. And if you lose a die, you're not going to be able to do as much, and you're, not, and you're getting closer to being knocked out, which is pretty bad. So you got to balance all of those three things together. So you can say, well, I want to maximize dice results over time. Or you can say, well, I just want to maximize dice results per round, or I just want to be tanky, or... You know, you can even talk about, well, I, I want this pool to be higher because it's going to be useful more often. So you got you to gotta balance all of those things together. So do, do I think there's a best way to play? Yeah, but I think it's only going to be good for maybe a tiny sliver more than any of the situations. I'll take your word for that now, but I think longer term, I would I would look to see if there's an algorithm to find the best. I, I already had like uh, I already had like two programmer guys. My brother who studies uh, computer science and just another guy who studies computer science said it says I'm gonna break and it's like I can't break it. <laughs> yeah, this is not exploitable. I'm sorry. I tried exploiting the hell out of this. It's hard. No, well, no, there might be a better way I sort of say using upgrades for edge points to stop the die downgrade and give you better rolls and things but yeah, you anyway, can, you so can, anyway it doesn't matter well, you, can, you can invest most of your points into uh, edge points and have a lot of endurance but you're going to have smaller dice so overall yeah you're going to have uh, bigger you're going to have bigger uh, amounts for the long run but it might just be that during that time it's already over. You just have three rounds to do something. It's time. It's a time-sensitive event, and by then it's like, look, I, I know in like ten rounds you can do a lot, but we kind of need the numbers now. Yes, yes, yeah. No, just so anyway. That's what I'm, I'm just saying. What's going through my head? You know, reading this. So, background. Yep. If your character takes an action that is related to a background keyword, you can re-roll a die. You must keep the result if you do re-roll the die. You can only use each background once per fight. Uh, that's what I've seen. Once per seed. Oh. I'm not assuming you're going to fight everyone. This isn't Dungeons and Dragons. Well, <laughs> your answer when, to everything is going to kill it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, when you use life? a background... No, my, my answer is put the man in front of me, get the man die, then I've achieved what I wanted to achieve. And the monster's weaker, and then I can kill it. Right. So, tip: when you use a background keyword, write down the keyword and how you used it. If your so drives, if your character takes an action related to a drive keyword, you can add its die to the roll. After the roll, give the die to the GM. He's the guy wearing the Hawaiian shirt. And after the round is over, he can use the die for a roll against you in a relevant way. Then. You get the dice back, and at the start of a new session, 
or scene, I guess. You get the die no, no, back. Session. Session, okay. Yeah. Get a new session. Oh, well, the whole thing. Okay, you get the die back automatically. A major drive is represented by a D12, medium D8, and the minor D4. Hmm. Yep. Make an index card with the drive on it and make sure it sticks near the die. Don't stick it to the die as that will affect the die rolling. Although you may want to do that if it affects the die roll and gives you maximum roll all the time. That's yeah, what but, after. but if your GM is going to do that, he's going to get the maximum roll too. So He is. Make sure you have two dice and give him one yeah, right. that isn't fixed. If you can buy a fixed die, also do that and make sure the DM doesn't know. These right. dice are literally going to be used <laughs> against you. You can fix them all you want, but it's not going to do anything. Like if, if you're going to fix one die, don't fix this one. So using flare. When your character acts in a way that matches your flare keyword, you get a bonus to your dice rolls. Whenever you roll below the average, turn it into an average rounded up. So on a D4, a two or lower becomes a three, a D6, three or lower becomes a four, etc. Only one flare can be used per round. It is also applied only for... So you said else. your character is, has ice powers, so... Is that like um... she can create a bit of ice? Yeah, not not. I don't want to be overly magical, but she's got the power to to create a little bit of ice. Well, you know, just the D. Do you think just the D four? Just yeah, just something small, minor. Yeah, a okay. minor. So a D four. Let's say one D four in a power pool called ice magic. Mm -hmm. Ice magic. There's a D four, and I'm gonna represent a D four with a triangle, and one edge. That's already two points. Because making a D4 is one point, and making an edge in a new power pool is one point as well. Uh, so you said she's pretty clever, so I assume she has like a two edge in mental die. Think of Black Widow-esque clever. Yeah, think Black Widow, actually. If, you, yeah, if you're a fan of the Marvel film, something like, yeah. So you said she's clever. If she's clever, I think you might want to upgrade like the edge on the mental pool from one edge to two edge, so... Her output for mental dice is. It's higher. certainly more more mental than physical. Okay. I mean, she's got she she uses her physicality. Yeah, you know, she's dexterous and that. You know, but I wouldn't say she's strong. She's she's more on. You know, okay. can get out of the way and hide and and uh, like you know do maybe do a bit of acrobatics to jump out of harm's okay, way. So you have two mental. So the way it is, like you started with three d6 in body pool and two heads, which is the mm -hmm. average for a human. And one and two mental dice and one edge, which is also the average. Then we added one day for D4 in ice powers and one edge. And then we made the that's two points. And then we made the edge in mental pool into two edges. You have that's four points. You have one point left. What do you want to do with that? What can I upgrade with one point? Can I put a bit more in my mental edge? Because I just yes. still, she just needs to be uh, mental edge. I mean, you can make it. Mental. You're gonna need three points to make the two into the two edge into a three. Yeah, but it's not gonna um, do anything because you don't have any any. I've you only have dice. two dice, so exactly. So can I get bigger dice? Do I need more points for the bigger dice? Uh, I'm not allowed more than a D4 in mental edge. No, you're allowed more than you can upgrade your mental okay, dice. Okay, so I, if I if I got rid of one edge and I could upgrade to a D6. Yeah, if you, but then you're still going to have one point left, so. Overall, it's... Can I use that for an edge? Then one point for an edge, and... Two points for an edge, yeah. So I'm going to write it down just to make it easy. Ice yeah. powers. Get an edge in a point in a pool is one point. One P. So it's always two points away. Well, I think, I think the number of points you're giving us five is rubbish. You need to make it six. No. You're going to get one point very quickly. Like, all you need to do to get a point is to go play golf. Okay. She's going to ask you for your shirt. All you need to do in order to, to get a minor is to drink really good tea. Yeah, it's, That's okay. all you need for another point. <laughs> Excellent. So, so yeah. So, so, can I keep the points spared? So, any spare points? Yeah, you can keep the point. points spared. You can exactly. keep the points yeah, spared then if that's you fine. want. But, but I would suggest, I mean, you're already going to invest in mental pool, so... You might just want to get another D4. How much would that... If I can do that, then I'll do that. And you can upgrade it later. Mm hmm Okay. So, mental... So I'm just going to write it down. 
I'm glad yeah. you are, because I've got no idea. One, two, two. It's, it's not, it's not, is it complicated or is it like? Well, because I'm reading it the first time and trying to take it in, and you've probably read it 30 times and wrote uh, it, you're probably a bit more aware of. Uh, near 50. Near 50, right. So. Okay, so this is it. That's... 1d4 ice power, one edge point, mental power, so two. I've got one, two edges, and one d4 mental pool. So I've only got one d4 in my mental pool. No, you got three d4. Three d4. This is the stuff you added. Okay. Oh, that's the stuff I added. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Okay. So that's not overly clear, but that's cool. Right, I'll get that now. Story. Okay. So that's your character. Um. By the way, this is this is your character seat, and it's only this ugly because I have horrible handwriting. That's right. Yeah, I can sort of vaguely make sense of it. So, I'll so just, uh, put me books back. We're gonna do the standard encounter folders, okay. which is goblin so, fight. Goblin fight. Goblin fight. Sorry, 